one more minute. So today story is about what? Today is no stories. The story is about B lymphocyte. So today we're going to discuss the journey of B lymphocyte. So how this B lymphocyte will become your lymphoma means uh, let's think a story of an innocent child. Innocent child, how he becomes a terrorist or a bad person. OK, so today we're going to discuss about the journey of a child, how his innocent will be lost and he will become very bad. So on the way of his journey, what all what all situations made him become bad or what experiences made him bad? If you want to correlate well and understand, OK, it is a story about a child, innocent child who becomes bad, very bad or antisocial. OK, I'll just put it in the group. Class started. Chalo. So. Basics. Why I'm taking one separate class on basics is I have seen, see, even myself, I used to uh, feel very bad about this lymphoma. I don't know. One Tara, like you'll have that, uh, like scared, you'll be scared of lymphomas and uh, those markers and everything looks same, right? As, uh, except that the Hodgkin's and non Hodgkin's. Only RSL is there, you will tell Hodgkin's, otherwise, non Hodgkin's. Is it non Hodgkin's? No, nobody knows what it is. That's what I felt I should give you one uh, overview about uh, B lymphoma basics so that any question comes you can write. Even they ask a question in Viva. Somebody mute yourself or you have logged into two devices. I am listening my own voice. Eco is coming. Okay, so mute yourself. Uh, then next what I am telling is like, sorry. Huh. So in Viva, they might ask you because one lymphoma case that you're going to get in your exams. Either it will be as a slide in uh, cytology or in your histopath, one slide will be there. Either it is Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's. That time they might ask you the questions. How did you approach? See, nobody uh, wants you to be like 100% correct. What examiner expects you from you is the way you approach things. Okay. They just want to test your basics. Nobody wants like how ah, you high five some sarcoma. No, no. How you approach your slide, like what all you saw, then what will be your differentials? Then how you do IHC marker, which IHC marker you want to put and what uh, cytogenetical uh, changes or translocations or molecular changes you want to do. So why you want to? So don't think it is just answering correct. It is the way you approach things. That's why I always tell you, right? not only with your studies, the way you approach with your life, it can be anything with your relationship, with your money, with your health. The way we approach things matters a lot. That's what decides the quality of our life. So that's what I want to apply on this also today. So today is a story about a innocent B cell or a B lymphocyte, how it becomes very bad. Okay, so we will start. I think now everybody has joined. It's 6-2. So today's overview, before going to that, we should know where do our innocent child lives? Where it lives or where it is produced in the bone marrow, right? It is produced in the bone marrow and it will go to a school, right? Like how kids go to school for education. So if it is a B cell, it will go to your B, uh, bone marrow only for education. If it is a T cell, it goes to your thymus for education, right? Where it will be taught manners. Uh, like where it will be taught, like how to differentiate between self and non-self, right? That's why they'll go to the school. That is uh, thymus for T cells, bone marrow for B cells. They, they'll undergo tolerance. Means they they, act, they acquire the ability to differentiate between the self, cell and uh, foreign cell. Okay, that is called differentiation or development of tolerance or self-tolerance. They develop the self-tolerance. So they get educated there. And... Now today's our hero is B cell. No, so let's think, uh, discuss about B cell. So it is produced in the bone marrow. Uh, it gets maturation or schooling also happens in bone marrow where it is taught how to differentiate between self and non-self. Then where all it will be roaming? It will uh, roam to the lymph node, right? It will be roaming around the different uh, through the blood. It will be after it got produced in your bone marrow, once it gets matured, it is released into the blood, right? In the blood vessel. So in the blood, it will move, it will roam, and it will reach the 
lymph nodes. Then again, it will uh, roam different lymphoid organs. So we will see what happens during its journey. Okay, we'll come back. So that's the ontogeny of your B cells. And what are the types of B cell do you know? And what are the markers of different compartments? Why we have to know this? Because if you understand these different compartments of a lymph node, especially because see, once your B lymphocytes are formed from the bone marrow, they don't stay here anymore. Like how you people, when you were kids, where you used to stay, when you were going for school, like fifth standard, 10th standard, you were at home, right? You were at home only. Now you have become big kids. Do you stay at home? A few people stay at home, luckily. But you will go outside na, for your higher education or job purpose or you will get married. You don't stay any longer in bone marrow. Right? This is your home. So you will be roaming around somewhere, sometime Bangalore, sometime Delhi, something based on your education requirements or your... Like that, this uh, mature B lymphocyte also roams around to different lymphocytes. Uh, sorry, lymph nodes. So it will be roams, uh, roaming around the different lymph nodes like this. So basically what happens to this B cell in the lymph node is our interest or this is the story. Right? Okay. Then how our WHO is classifying this lymph lymphomas? Means the bad ones. Bad Once they become bad, no? How, what, how many types of bad cells, bad lymphomas you have? And how are we going to identify them? If you get a slide... How are you going to identify and how are you going to come to a diagnosis? Okay, this is the today's uh, class co topics. So first, normal histology. So that's what, uh, no need to tell about bone marrow, I guess you know. And no need to tell about normal uh, immunity also. So we'll go directly to the lymph node. So what do this lymph node will have? It will have a capsule. It will have a subcapsular sinus. This is important. Why? Because even spleen is also a lymphoid organ, right? Even thymus is also a lymphoid organ. Only the feature which helps you differentiate between the lymph node, spleen and thymus is your subcapsular sinus, which is present only in your lymph node. Okay, you have to remember this. Then you have uh, lymphatics, afferent and efferent, which comes to the lymph node and goes from the lymph node, right? Afferent means, like Hindi will tell, no, ah, ah, means come, come. So afferent means which comes towards the lymph node, efferent means which is going out of the lymph nodes. So, uh, so the, uh, along with that, your matured B lymphocytes also will come, which are produced in your bone marrow, which were secreted in the peripheral blood. So, they roam, roam, roam and they come to the lymph node. Right? That will keep at time. Before we see the what are the parts of a lymph node. So, lymph node will have your cortex and medulla. See, this is, center one is medulla, this one is cortex. Right? This is subcapsular sinus and capsule, afferent vessels, efferent vessels, right? Over. Now, what, what all constitutes your cortex is you have the uh, follicles. These are called as follicles, okay? There are two types of follicles. See, this is primary follicle and this is secondary follicle. So, we will be discussing what do you mean by primary and secondary follicle, okay? So, cortex will have the follicles. There are two types of follicles, <clears throat> Primary and secondary follicle. See, primary follicle is homogeneous. There is no different areas. Whereas in secondary follicles, you will have three zones. Huh. Whereas in the secondary follicle, you have three zones. The center one is called as germinal center. Next is your mantle zone and the peripheral one is marginal zone. So this is the primary versus secondary follicle, which are present in your cortex. So the space between these two, uh, means follicle, follicle ke beech mein jo jaga hai, means the, uh, the uh, space between these two follicles is called as paracorticular area or paracortex or you can call it as interfollicular area. So why this is important? See, mainly your follicles are made up of what cells? B cells, right? And dendritic cells and macrophages. Whereas your paracorticular area is made up of your T cells and your dendritic cells. So that's why we have to know the different compartmentalization of the cells normally where they are present. Then what does this medulla contain? This medulla contains your plasma cells which are arranged in cord like fashion and your macrophages. So these are the uh, uh, normal histology of your lymph node, right? It has a capsule, subcapsular sinus, cortex, medulla. Cortex will have follicles, two types of follicles, primary and secondary follicles. 
primary follicles don't have the uh, zonations, whereas secondary will have your germinal center, mantle, and marginal zone. They are called as secondary follicles. So the, uh, these follicles are made up of B cells, predominantly B cells. Apart from uh, B cells, you will see follicular dendritic cells also and macrophages also. Then this paracorticular area contains exclusively your T cells. This was a neat SS question. They asked, paracortex of lymph node contains dash type of lymph, uh, dash type of cells or predominantly dash type of cells are seen, that is T cells. And then dendritic cells. And your medulla is predominantly consisting of plasma cells and macrophages. Okay. We are done with the normal histology. So this is how your normal uh, histopath uh, of a lymph node looks. Can you see? So this is the subcapsular sinus. It's very faint because it is in the low power, right? And see, this is the follicle. See how nicely the follicle is there. So this means this is a cortex, right? So see, this is the medulla. This is the capsule, subcapsular sinus, cortex, and this is the paracortex. The uh, space between the two follicles is your paracortex, right? Shallow. Next is the little bit higher view of your lymph node. The same thing. See, this is the capsule and these are your follicles. Can you see the follicles? So these are called as germinal centers. See, there is a, they are not homogeneous. If you observe, are these follicles homogeneous like your primary follicle? No. Can you see? Here is a dark area. Here it is a light area, right? So there is a different area. So this is a secondary follicle. If we, everything is homogeneous, then we call it as primary follicle. See here we can see the germinal center, mantle zone, and this is the last periphery faint one is your marginal zone. So I can see all the three zones. See this is the marginal zone, this is the mantle zone, dark one, and this is your germinal center. So this is a secondary follicle. And see the medulla is showing the cords, sinuses, blood vessels, and see, this is the paracorticular area. The between the two follicles is your paracorticular area. So this is entire thing is your cortex. This is your medulla. Am I clear? Am I clear? Yes, yes ma'am. We will go to the next slide. So now, now we'll focus on the follicle. I told you how many types of follicle are there primary and secondary. I told secondary follicle will have the zones, right? See, this is the secondary follicle. If you see, this is the pale area. See here also, this is the pale area, right? So this we call it as germinal center. And this is your mantle zone. And surround it very thin rim will be your marginal zone, okay? So this is a secondary lymphoid follicle. This is your capsule and this is subcapsular sinus, okay? This we already finished. So now, why now this is the normal histology we finished. Now we are going to study about the C. First topic was normal histology we finished. Now we are going to read. What do we mean by ontogeny? Means the journey of B lymphocyte. How it is maturing from a small kid to a adult. So what all changes happening in it? Like how changes happen in us? Our height will change, weight will change, hair changes, voice changes. So like that in B lymphocyte also, so many changes will happen. That only we're going to study. So if you know, why we have to know this? Why we have to know this? Because, see, why you have to know this? Because all your B cell neoplasms tend to mimic these various stages of normal B cell differentiation. Are understood? So if there is any abnormality in this normal differentiation at any different stages will give rise to different lymphomas. Like see, have you ever observed, we read, we read, no, like uh, uh, for example, uh, in uterus, if the baby is inside the mother womb and mother doesn't eat properly, the baby will be malnourished or low birth weight or stunted, small for gestational. This is the things will happen. So if you know where the thing has happened, you can predict how the baby will be, right? For example, there was a prolonged labor and there was meconium aspiration. So you expect that baby will have ARDS, acute respiratory distress. So that's how you will expect the outcome of the baby, how healthy it will be. If you know the normal development, right? I'm just giving example. So in the similar way, if you know how your B cell develops in a different, different stages, and if you know what is normal, what can go wrong in that stage of development, you can expect what type of lymphoma can arise from there. 
so it will be become easy for you right to do a diagnosis so that's why we have to know the normal b cell differentiation because it mimics the various stages and also they resemble like normal so that is the main basis of your classification and nomenclature so that's why i know half half not half 90% of people are scared with lymphomas because they never read the normal uh, development of b lymphocytes you just directly jump to the classification then it doesn't make any sense okay you should enjoy your subject then nothing will be scary so so we are going to start with the journey so where your lymphocytes going to be born in your bone marrow so that is called as precursor b cell phase means which is exclusively in your bone marrow so first it will be formed in your bone marrow right uh, then means it is at the home first when the baby is born it will be in the home right breast feeding it will be with mother only then it will start going home uh, home not it will start going to the school later it will be it will come out of come out of the house that is it will come out of the bone marrow that is in the blood and it will go to your lymph node right so now in the lymph node what all the areas we have one is uh, before it is entering your follicle so in lymph node only we have three stages before entering into the uh, lymph, uh, your germinal center is called as interfollicular area or pre germinal center phase okay then once it enters the follicle that is called germinal center phase or follicular phase once it it has been uh, to uh, to the your germinal center and it came out that is called as post germinal center understood so if i have to tell you like see it has entered ha huh? so your the uh, b lymphocyte was there in your bone marrow that stage is called as what stage precursor stage or bone marrow stage then it is released into the blood so now it will reach your lympho, uh, lymph node right so it, it it will come through somewhere from this blood vessel so it is here so that is called as pre germinal center phase then it will enter your germinal center then it is the it will exit like this somewhere so it is a post germinal center so you have basically how many phases in a journey of a b lymphocyte one is precursor phase one is interfollicular phase or pre germinal center germinal center and post germinal center if you want to remember better to easy precursor pre germinal germinal post germinal okay now we have to discuss in each phase what changes does our b lymphocyte is acquiring and if there is any problem in this phase what type of lymphoma it will give rise to okay so in every phase you should ask three questions what is the normal b cells you see there what happening to them normally and what markers do they express and what if that thing goes wrong and what type of leukemia going to arise from that phase so in each phase you have to think of three questions what is normal thing happening there what are the maturation markers or whatever markers they acquire or they lose or if there is somebody please unmute don't disturb me in between okay unmute yourself and third is if something is going hey wire then what type of lymphoma can you expect there next next slide uh, this is the pictorial view i made it simplified this is how who tells it looks scary i know so this is how your precursor uh, b cell looks in the bone marrow then uh, they may, uh, they got released into the circulation and they reached your lymph node this is the lymph node so before entering your germinal center this is your germinal center so this is called as pre germinal center germinal center post germinal center we'll come back to this we'll come in the last if you see now you'll get scared so next so i made it uh, now we are discussing about what phase precursor phase means it is in your bone marrow so that means it is a precursor right means it's a immature cell it's just born like some one day old baby does it know anything it, it doesn't know anything so what all the markers uh, which will be expressed if somebody is a pre uh, premature or immature whatever so it will be tdt that is terminal deoxyribose this is a premature marker when we were discussing you remember we were discussing uh, 
uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemias, which are the example of premature lymphoblasts, right? Either it's a B or T. We read now they express TDT. So this is a marker of immaturity. So they will be expressed in this precursor cells. B and T, B and T, both the type of lymphocytes will express. And along with that, they express because we are discussing with B cells. So here the marker will be CD10. And LMO2, I will later tell you the full form. As of now, you remember. <coughs> Sorry. Then this precursor uh, 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 cells will become pro. They will become pro. This is precursor. Remember, precursor B cells. Then it will become pro. Then what extra thing it will acquire? It will acquire CD34. What is CD34? It is a stem cell factor, right? That means this cell has the ability to proliferate multiple times. Understood? So this precursor B cell, which has TDT, CD10 and LMO2 will become pro B lymphocyte and it will acquire one additional CD marker that is your CD34, which help which is a stem cell marker. So that means this fellow has a capacity, means normally only it has a capability to divide, rapidly proliferate, okay? Next, after coming to pro, you will have what? Pre. This is precursor. Don't make it short form as pre, okay? Please, it is different. It is precursor. This is pre, okay? This is precursor B cell. This is pro and this is pre B. Then what happens? And now it will mature. Now, little bit it has to mature, right? Before our baby was breastfeeding. Now it will uh, drink by itself. At least it will try to uh, uh, drink something. Then it will eat by itself like that. So now it has become pre-B cell. So what is the function of our uh, uh, B cells? To identify a foreign, a foreign particle as a foreign, right? So they need what? Uh, so they need what? They need a receptor on their surface, right? Without receptor, are they going to identify any antigen? No. Without receptor, are they going to talk to anyone? No. You need a basic receptor, right? So I already previously discussed you the structure of B receptor and T cell receptor, if you remember, before teaching ALL. Okay? Uh, you have to know the B cell and T cell receptor. So these receptors are made up of immunoglobulin chains, right? So that's why this pre-BLL, uh, uh, pre-B cell start producing the mu chain. Because it is immature, obviously the immunoglobulin chains will be produced in the nucleus and they will be secreted into the cytoplasm, right? First, then they get assembled on the cell membrane, correct? So because this is an immature fellow, where do you expect your immunoglobulin chain? Obviously, whatever is produced by your nucleus, you will expect them in the cytoplasm right so in pre b cell apart from this marker what extra it is acquiring that is a rearrangement or production of your mu chains in the cytoplasm then we call it as immature b cell what what does immature b cell has now this immunoglobulin chain whatever was there in the cytoplasm has now come to your membrane like this now it is on your membrane which is igm type so once your heavy chain has formed, now your light chain will get rearranged. I don't know, all of you can hear me? Or anybody has any issues? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma we can hear you. Uh, those who are not able to hear, log out and log in. You, your net is slow. Okay, so uh, once it becomes an immature cell, uh, the membrane IgM, Please reply to her. She wrote something not able to hear. Okay. Ah, oh, sorry. I have to again come back. Sorry. So this uh, uh, membranous IgM will be there. Once the uh, IgM means it is a heavy chain, right? You know, no immunoglobulin has two chains. One is heavy chain and one is the light chain, right? So now this heavy chain went on the membrane and it, it got attached. But you need a light chain also no, to become a functional immunoglobulin. Then only the antigen can come and bind, right? So then it starts uh, rearranging your light chains also. Then this uh, immature fellow in the bone marrow release, uh, released out of your blood. So it came out of your house now. So it is wandering on the streets and getting exposure. So after it leaves, this rearrangement also completes. 
and it will become your mature B lymphocyte. It will become your mature B lymphocyte. That we call it as NAVE. NAVE means you remember when first time you joined on MBBS first day, how you are and now how you are. Just imagine. So that time you are very NAVE, right? So like that, this is NAVE. So please understand the immature B cells, we have the membrane heavy chain of the immunoglobulin. Still the light chain has not formed yet. They are rearranging. Okay. But once it gets released uh, uh, from the bone marrow, this completes. This light chain rearrangement completes and there is a formation of the uh, proper immunoglobulin uh, receptor on the cell surface. So that's why we call them as mature B lymphocytes, but they are called as NAVE. NAVE means they, they, have, they have functioning receptor on their uh, cell membrane. But they never uh, identified any antigen. Got it? So they are called as naive B cell. Means they have the functioning uh, B cell receptor on their surface. But till now they never encountered any antigen. That is what they meant for, right? What is the purpose of a B lymphocyte? Is to identify an antigen, right? Whether it is a self or non-self uh, bacteria virus, that is different. So they have not encountered the antigen yet. They just released from the bone marrow and they just got matured by formation of this receptor. So they are called as naive cells. So when they become naive, what marker they are acquiring? It is CD5 positive. What they are acquiring? CD5. So let's one more time revise what all we read. Okay, we'll revise one more time what all we read. One is your precursor B cell phase. That is immature. It will have TDT, CD10 and LMO. Then it will become pro and it acquires CD34 uh, which is stem cell life which helps in the proliferation. Then it will become pre B cell which uh, acquires this uh, immunoglobulin production. It starts forming immunoglobulin in the cytoplasm. So whatever the immunoglobulin is formed in the nucleus will be in your cytoplasm. Then it becomes immature because this uh, immunoglobulin will come uh, and heavy chains will come and be on your membrane. But they are only the heavy chain. So still light chain has to be formed. They are still undergoing rearrangement. So in this phase, it gets released out of your bone marrow. And somewhere in the circulation, it successfully completes this rearrangement and forms the intact uh, immunoglobulin uh, chain. That is intact B, B cell receptor. That is normal B cell receptor. But they, are called, they acquire CD5. But they uh, never encountered any antigen. So that's why they are called as named B cells. Now, this is the same thing of my notes for better understanding. So, this is your lymphoblast, which is a pro cell, uh, which is CD34 positive, become pre, uh, pre cell, which has cytoplasmic mu heavy chains, immature, which has membrane. Then, once it is released out of your bone marrow, it will uh, acquire all these things and it will become mature, but still it is called NAV because it has not encountered with any antigen, right? So, this is uh, NAV B cell, which is CD5 positive. So on this way, what is happening is here, your immunoglobulin gene is undergoing VDJ rearrangement. That is what now? I think you all have seen those video. What is VDJ rearrangement? So if there is any defect to undergo this VDJ rearrangement, your B lymphocyte will die by apoptosis. Because there is uh, that is the main purpose of your B lymphocyte, right? To identify an antigen and uh, uh, and produce the specific antibody. If you don't know how to do, then there is no purpose in your life. So that's why they die. So now this is your uh, mature one. So there can be two fate or two possibilities can happen. One while going, it can acquire one antigen. Correct. While circulating it, your nerve cell can acquire one antigen or expose, get exposed to one antigen or it will not get exposed to antigen on its way to lymph node. Right. This is the bone marrow. It is released in the blood. So it is going to the lymph node, right? On the way to lymph node, there can be two possibilities. One, it can get exposed to the antigen which is in the circulation or somewhere or it will not get exposed. So what happens if it not get exposed? It will be, uh, it will be like near B cell only. So where it going to stay in the lymph node? It, it going to stay in the lymph node as a primary follicle. How it going to stay? It going to stay in the lymph node that is in the follicle as your primary follicle in the cortex. Got it? So what do the primary cortex of lymph node uh, uh, consisting of? That is your NAV B cells which are CD5 positive. Understood? So that's how.
then uh, what if this fellow got some mutations even though it is not exposed to antigen here some abnormality happened during this vdj rearrangement something went wrong because vdj rearrangement is what you are uh, just cutting your dna and uh, attaching like anything right vdj means you are just cutting your genes and attaching them right so if during this process if your nav b cell acquired some mutations like deletion of chromosome 11 and 13 and trisomy 12 you remember like 11 12 13 okay 11 and 13 gets deleted so see this is uh, how to remember and this cll okay there are two l's think it is like 11 l l is like 11 so deletion of 11 12 13 and you remember then in between 12 is there no you make it trisomy so 11 and 13 deletion 12 is trisomy if this uh, nav b cell acquires this abnormality then it becomes your cll understood so that means your cll will be what positive cd5 positive that is the implication what you understood all your chronic lymphocytic leukemias are c uh, cd5 positive and what is the cell of origin it is your nav b cells got it and what mutation leads to them to become cll it is your deletion of chromosome 11 13 and trisomy 12 got it instead of that there is a vdj rearrangement right that is heavy chain immunoglobulin gene right that is heavy chain immunoglobulin gene is located on your chromosome number 14 right where your vdj rearrangement is happening at that time by mistake if your cyclin d comes and fuses with your chromosome number 14 what this is also 11 remember that's what i am telling you all uh, this have problem with chromosome 11 okay so it comes and fuses with your chromosome uh, 14 and causes one transcription that is called translocation of 11 bar 14 now what do you what do you, or anybody knows what is cyclin i have already told you it has a role in the cell cycle right a cell to divide you need a cyclins so this is a cell cycle uh, cy uh, it helps in the progression into the cell division so this translocation will increase the production of your cyclin d what it will cause is increases in the production of your cyclin d so as a result your nav b cell keeps proliferating in excess and causing what lymphoma what lymphoma anyone cell ah uh, mantle cell lymphoma mantle that cell. means mantle correct ha huh. understood causes your mantle cell lymphoma so now you understood so now tell me uh, if this cell is a mantle uh, cell lymphoma where do they pre present in your lymph node it is arising from this area understood your nav cells will be present in this area Uh, or cd5 cells present in this this area if acquires the translocation of 11 bar 14 they give rise to mantle zone lymphoma understood so in that type of lymphoma what you going to expect which will be expanded your mantle zone will be very big obviously no see the the cells in the mantle zone are becoming malignant so which zone which area of your follicle will get expanded which area should get expanded obviously your mantle cell ah very good mantle see now you are you are loving lymphoma no they are so easy i don't know why people are scared of them they are very good people come on you are understanding i can get it come on so uh, for, till here we are clear and for example if there is no mutation okay nothing nothing they, he is fine our nav b cell was very good fellow nothing went wrong these are the things should had have went wrong but nothing went wrong he is absolutely normal he reached the lymph node so he reached the lymph node where do we he said i told he will sit in that follicle and form your primary follicle of lymph node that's it now this is done right now the second possibility we have to see so our hero went out of the home and he got exposed to the villain then there is one big fight no dish dish will happen okay so uh, what 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 is the fight we have to see now so our hero went out he got exposed to the antigen so now it is no more called nav b cell because it got exposed to who antigen so this antigen fitted in the your 
that uh, receptor uh, then it activated your b cell so what what is the outcome of the b cell one three possibilities one your b cell can get transformed and become activated b cell or it can proliferate or it can uh, uh, mature into plasma cell and memory cell so that it can form the antibodies which are specific for this antigen and it will can kill the antigen and uh, 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 start your inflammation correct and provide you immunity so once your new b cell gets exposed to antigens there can be three outcomes one it can get transformed into activated b cells or it can proliferate means it will multiply it will become some four five cells or it can uh, mature into a antibody secreting cells to provide you the immunity either it will become plasma cell or memory cell okay so if it proliferates where it gonna proliferate because it was on the way right your cell was in the blood it, it is not reached the uh, lymph node yet it has left your bone marrow so where it gonna reach it has to go somewhere right so it was still in the circulation so it goes to your lymph node where it goes like it goes to the lymph node and it proliferates there where it goes to the lymph node obviously all your nerve cells will go where to your primary follicle right so now this activated b cell will go to this uh, primary follicle and it will keep dividing it divides into different types of cells it divides into what different types of cells that is either it will divide like centrocyte or it divide like centroblast or it divide like a immunoblast so because of this your follicle will have now three zones what zones your follicle will have now that is your germinal center mantle zone and marginal zone so because of your uh, this activated nerve b cell which went to the follicle which was before was primary follicle now there is a proliferation of these cells leading to the formation of secondary follicle which has this three zones am i clear am i clear yes ma'am uh, yes, ma and it fills your follicle and forms the secondary follicle and germinal center okay now next so this was the story till your till uh, it reached your germinal center right <clears throat> we finished uh, bone marrow journey and we finished uh, till here so we are going to the next phase now next phase is what interfollicular area so now it has reached your lymph node so what's gonna happen so we finished first phase of the journey right so coming to the second second phase so now uh, this you keep a pause here we'll come back to this keep a pause okay now hmm the same thing your immature b cell will leave your bone marrow forming the mature new b cell which can reside in the interfollicular area and express your igm and idg that was the first criteria which we read here no before reaching here it will go to interfollicular area then only it can reach your germinal center uh, follicle no directly it can't go like this it has to go through this inter uh, pre gc area then only gc right so that's what he is explaining then same upon exposure they become extra follicular blast and they express the igm so that was your this this story when he got exposed to this antigen it has become your follicular blast cells which is happening in the pre gc area correct then it will express igm so this follicular blast have two fates one it can leave short lived plasma cells form the antibodies and die off or it can enter your germinal center and undergo what i i assume all of you know what is somatic hypermutation and switching of the immunoglobulin and it will form your centroblast that's what i told no okay so we'll come back again so what happens once it it uh, comes from your uh, bone marrow it will enc encounter either antigen or no antigen if it is not enc encountering any antigen it will go to your primary follicle of lymph node this is the uh, primary follicle of your lymph node right so before going into the primary follicle obviously it ha it, ha it will be in the pre germinal center area right so that's what we are discussing so in the pre germinal center area so it will be there 
if it has exposed to the antigen in the pre germ uh, in the pre germinal center area it will become your follicular blast which expresses only igm whereas nerve cells will express igm and igb so here then this blast can become short lived plasma cells and after producing immunoglobulins it will die or c why you need this class switching do you think igm can provide us the entire uh, immunity from a foreign body no first we need igm right in the initial stages for long term because igm ka half life is very less so you want a long lived uh, uh, immune response so we have to switch our immunoglobulin from igm to what igg igg which confers us as a long term immunity right so that's why this blast cells has to undergo smh and class shift so this blast cells are now called as centroblast so what is the name of this blast is a centroblast how do they look see remember centroblast means c right c alva centroblast andre c thane so remember like c this is c can you understand this is the c so that means it will have 1 2 3 prominent nucleoli which is attached to the nuclear membrane got it this is the centroblast so they tried no in description uh, lympho node is seen secondary follicular signs seen admixed with lymphoblast immunoblast centrocytes and they right no so what are the uh, centroblasts they are nothing but the activated nerve b cells which got exposed to your antigen in the interfollicular area that is pre germinal center they become follicular blast and they have successfully undergone shm somatic hypermutation and switching of your immunoglobulin because you need two types of immunoglobulin in the initial stages of your infection you need igm but later to confer a lifelong immunity you need igg so you need uh, your b cell to have that ability to switch the immunoglobulin right so if they undergo successfully then they will become centroblast so morphologically how you gonna identify your centroblast that is they will have a 1 2 3 prominent nucleoli c shaped remember c shaped which are attached to your nuclear membrane so those are your centroblast am i clear please somebody answer okay yes ma'am yes. yes so yes. then coming to the follicular phase now your centroblast in your follicle right the centroblast is present where now it came to your follicle that is your germinal center c this was the interfollicular area see your nerve cell can undergo uh, apoptosis or when it gets exposure to antigen exposed it will become extra follicular blast and this extra this is short lived plasma cell ah uh, this this extra cellular blast has two you no know, one is short lived plasma cells will produce the immunoglobulin and one will become your centroblast see this has become the centroblast which has underwent your smh somatic hypermutation and it has the ability to switch your immunoglobulins that is igm to igg so that's what they are explaining now you will understand this diagram so first in the b cell you will have precursor b cell uh, that is progenitor b cell that will form your pre b cell then uh, then it will form your immature b cell then it will be released into the circulation then on expo uh, two things can happen whether it is not got exposed to any antigen then it will go and sit on your mantle cell mantle zone if there is a mutation in this process that is translocation of 11 bar 14 it will become mantle uh, zone lymphoma or nerve b cells which will be uh, here and uh, they might undergo apoptosis also if this nerve b cells get exposed to antigen there are two fate it will uh, one it will uh, become a blast uh, follicular blast they two fate no that is short lived plasma cells which will secrete immunoglobulins or it will become centroblast if it acquires the proper somatic hypermutation was successful and shifting of your immunoglobulin uh, occurs then it will become your centroblast so that's the thing so obviously your pre gc neoplasm will be your mantle zone lymphoma and your cll right only two things can occur from your pgc whereas your precursor all those we read no like yesterday's class b lymphoblastic lymphoma bar leukemia t lymphoblastic bar t cell lymphoma bar leukemia so these are the 
thing now we are discussing about the third phase of our journey that is follicular area or that is your germinal center hope i am clear not too fast not too you are able to understand right if you have any doubts please stop in between okay now coming to follicular that is germinal center so in germinal center now your centroblast has reached correct see your centroblast has reached your germinal center now so now so this fellow will get differentiated into the centrocyte these are the centrocytes these are called as small cleaved cells these are the small cleaved cells so it can undergo apoptosis normally why there is apoptosis they don't have any anti apoptotic protein so they they die off but what if they acquire this anti apoptotic protein then it will not die no obviously it will not die amar hai it is immortal so that what happens in your follicular and dlbcl of germinal type they express this so there will be translocation of what there will be translocation of 18 bar 14 na huh? i don't remember so there is a translocation of anybody seeing follicular lymphoma ah, 14 bar 18 so here uh, translocation of 14 bar 18 so your bcl2 is present in the chromosome number 18 so this chromosome number 18 will go and fuses with whom you are heavy chain immunoglobulin locus that is your chromosome number 14 right so this translocation 18 bar 14 or 14 bar 18 will lead to expression of bcl2 and giving rise to your lymphomas that is follicular lymphomas why it is follicular lymphoma because it is arising from whom obviously your germinal center right so that's the name given and dlbcl we'll come back to it later so this much you should remember so from the germinal center if this <clears throat> they don't have normally bcl2 so if they start expressing bcl2 that means it is follicular lymphoma correct now to one fate of centrocyte one more fate of centrocyte is it can become memory b cell and it will go where it will go to your marginal zone where it will go it will go to your which area here the periphery one it will go to your marginal area right so see your centroblast will be present in the germinal center that's why it is called as centroblast remember why it is called centroblast the blast which is present in the center that is germinal center remember okay then it will uh, become a centrocyte centrocyte has two fates either it can die by apop normally it dies by apoptosis The, uh, why it is dying it will not have any anti apoptotic protein so it will die so you can induce the apoptosis and die but sometimes what happen they acquire the mutation they think why we should die why i should die so it acquires the translocation with your immunoglobulin heavy chain locus with your uh, bcl2 that is present on chromosome number 18 then it becomes follicular lymphoma that's why in follicular lymphoma your germinal center is abnormal if you observe understood it is your germinal center which is expanded got it then after uh, one more fate is that it can become your memory cells they they will uh, go and migrate to your marginal zone right and okay if they are went there and normal good but if they acquire mutation they become marginal zone lymphomas what they become marginal zone lymphomas if those cells which went to your marginal zone acquires the mutation they become marginal zone lymphoma so what mutation they are acquiring is to such one minute they are acquiring what uh, there is no such uh, translocation here we'll see one more time okay okay then coming to next slide hmm. so they will be long lived and uh, they will become plasma cells and they secrete your antigens so we are done with your follicular phase so this is your activated b cell can become centrocyte centroblast and immunoblast this was your neo b cell right when your neo b cell got exposed to the antigen it become activated and it went to the center of the germinal center and it proliferated as centroblast it has a ability to undergo somatic hypermutation and clash with the immunoglobulin right now who is this hero m mick he is our hero 
so this fellow is very important in the formation of what your germinal center so uh, when it activates it activates when your new cell get exposed to antigen or your t cells get exposed to the bcl6 so this fellow plays a very important role in the formation of germinal center now tell me if something goes wrong with this guy what type of lymphoma you are expecting in germinal center so what else what other lymphoma can arise in germinal center uh, which involves semic loud loud follicular m m by c mutation ma which lymphoma but ma ha barkit correct now now everything is making sense for you right you people need to buy hard right so if this mutation happens one more lymphoma arises from your germinal center that is your burkitt lymphoma and remember this c mix uh, helps in the proliferation what help it is a unmute yourself please so it is a uh, proliferator it helps in the excessive proliferation that's why in burkitt lymphoma ki 67 is almost 100 that's why it is rapidly growing and i told you when anything is growing rapidly it will die rapidly also so that's why there is apoptosis to clear to eat that apoptosis your tangible body macrophages will come and that will give the star is sky appearance remember that's how everything is correlated so beautifully see no need to buy heart so your c mic has a role in the formation of your germinal center so if some mutation happen here it gives rise to burkitt lymphoma because the c mic is associated with excessive cell proliferation so that's why your burkitt is aggressive lymphoma so excessive proliferation there is apoptosis those is eaten by your macrophages giving rise to starry sky appearance that's why ki67 is 100% what it so normally uh, it will stain where do it will stain in the light zone now what is this light and dark, dark zone this we didn't uh, discuss right so see this was your germinal center right this is a secondary follicle right first we know the secondary follicle where somewhere will be the diagram of ha this is our secondary follicle in between in the center was your germinal center then is your mantle zone then is your marginal zone right so now we are discussing about the germinal center what all the parts of the germinal center we are discussing so your germinal center will have two areas one is called your dark zone like this see it is dark one is called as light zone okay so what is the implication of this you have to understand see this dark zone is made up of proliferating b cells which have sms that is somatic hypermutations which are undergoing your somatic hypermutation that is your vdj rearrangement right and light zone this is the apical light zone see this is the dark zone and this is the light zone so what do this light zone will contain it contains your memory b cells plasma cells and all your centrocytes all this will be present here right and in between is your follicular dendritic cells which gives that a uh, pale color okay this is your follicular dendritic cells then is your mantle zone then is the marginal zone so you understood what is the dark zone and what is the light zone so this is the dark and light zone okay so uh, this uh, mbc is mostly present in your centrocytes which are present in the light zone of the germinal center and it is not present in your dark zone okay that is your proliferating b cells here it is absent if you do staining normally it should present in your light zone where your centrocytes plasma cells or memory cells are present here exclusively your centroblasts are present who are present centroblasts okay so now coming to the formation of germinal center so obviously you have new b cell it get exposed to antigen then it will run 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 and comes to your follicle and form the secondary follicle and the centroblast will go to your germinal center three three areas no germinal center mantle zone marginal zone so it goes to the germinal center and here your centroblast are proliferating which forms the dark zone of your germinal center what it forms dark zone and here in between is your intermingled follicular dendritic cells and then will be your centrocytes and plasma cells and memory cells which forms your light zone so light zone will be positive for mmic normally okay that's how the centroblast will become centrocytes and 
all these things. That's what we read here, no? That's what this says, the same thing here. So this is what I explained. Now, your germinal center is over. So now tell me what are the lymphomas you are expecting in germinal center? One is your follicular lymphomas. One is the marginal zone lymphoma. It, this memory cells goes in there and they become malignant. And one is your CMIC is gone. But it, that is Burkitt's lymphoma. So what about our new B cells? New B cells will have two LL, that is CLL and mantle zone lymphomas. Okay. Mantle zone is your translocation of LL. No, LL. Remember LL. So 11 bar 14 and CLL deletion of 11 bar 13 and rhizome 12. Uh, whereas your uh, follicular lymphoma is BCL2. So that is chromosome number 18. The translocation of 14 bar 18. CMIC, I forgot the chromosome number. Uh, one nimsha. I think it is a. Uh, but it's uh, 88, 88, 88. CMIC is present on chromosome number 8. 14 is constant for everyone. 14 will be always same because the heavy chain locus of immunoglobulin will be same for all the lymphomas. There is no doubt. So, Burkitt C. Mick is present in chromosome number 8. So, the C. Mick is present in 8. So, in germinal center, one is your uh, uh, BCL2 that is 18, chromosome number 18. So, we will have the translocation of 14 bar 18. One is your germinal center formation uh, that is C. Mick that is present in chromosome number 8. So, remember 18 and 8. Okay. This is 18 and this is 8. So, all the things associated with your germinal center are 8, 18. 14 is common everywhere. For all lymphomas, 14 is common. Next, coming to post-germinal center. So, what happens in post-germinal center now? What is left? Uh, all these things have happened. Now, what is left? Uh, your plasma cells will be released, right? All these plasma cells will be released. So, in the post-germinal center, you will have your plasma cells which are circulating in the peripheral blood. So, in the lymph node where they are present in your marginal zone and also in your spleen also they are present and also they are present in your malt. Means uh, lining your GIT will have the aggregates of lymph nodes no? that are called as malt, mucosa associated lymphoids. Even your respiratory tract also in the mucosa you will have these lymphoid aggregates. So, all this. So, any mutation in your marginal zone B cells will cause marginal zone lymphomas. So, there are basically two types. One is your lymph node, one is your gut, like a spleen. What we call it as spleen, sorry. Spleen. So, spleen also has the marginal zone. So, marginal zone lymphomas are one is lymph node and one is splenic. So, splenic marginal zone lymphomas, nodal marginal zone lymphomas. And obviously, your plasma cell can give rise to plasma cell neoplasm. Now, I want to ask one question. Uh, you people know H. pylori, no? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma ah. So, yes, H. pylori is the antigen, right? It is an antigen which stimulates your B cell, right? Then your neo B cell will become that activated B cell and it will become the centroblast angry young man, right? So, normally in the GIT, the aggregates of lymph nodes is called as what? GALT, correct? Gut associated, gut associated lymphoid tissue, correct? Yes, so, it is a gut associated lymphoid tissue. So, now my question is, when I, when I took yesterday class, what did I tell you? Uh, lymphoma bar leukemia, we write now. What do you mean by lymphoma bar leukemia means? Uh, a, a malignancy arising in the lymph node can spill into the blood and can even involve your lymph node, right? That is called lymphoma bar leukemia. Even your lymphoma predominantly involving the uh, lymph node can spill into the blood and go and involve your bone marrow, right? Correct. Now tell me, you have H. pylori infection and uh, that fellow developed a lymphoma. Which type of lymphoma he will develop? GALT or MALTOMA, right? MALTOMA. Ah. So, which type of uh, lymphocytes they are? B, B lymphocytes, right? Now, tell me, will he going to this B, B, this lymphocytes? Obviously, they are malignant, right? Are they going to involve your uh, bone marrow? Or are they going to spill into your blood? Yes or no? No, ma'am. Why? Why it is not happening? It should happen, no? Why they are only there? 
why they are not going to the draining lymph nodes see your stomach has a uh, draining lymph nodes right yes ma'am uh, they are malignant lymphocytes no they can roam everywhere no why they are only sitting in the stomach they they are not attached with basement membrane like epithelial cells right they can roam wherever they want so even though why they are sitting only there they can go to duodenum uh, they can go to lymph nodes uh, they can go to bone marrow they can go they can go anywhere na see the normal uh, environment is same no even in lymph node also the same environment where your lymphocytes can survive even in bone marrow also they have the same environment they can survive alwa so there is no change in the uh, environment right for their survival correct or wrong yes ma'am then why they are sitting only in your stomach like malt maltoma so only restricted to that mucosa only why they are not spreading why they are not going to lymph node why they are not spilling into the blood see we tell no plasma cell spilled into the blood is called as plasma cell leukemia is there is any entity called maltoma spilled into the blood called as malt maltoma leukemia something like that no even mast cell also you have mast cell leukemia correct yes ma'am why we don't have nobody knows okay now someone read what is the reason it is called foaming the concept is called as foaming what it is called foaming the concept is called foaming for example you have an apartment which has 200 uh, flats in it one apartment some 20 floored apartments and you have some 200 house still you go to your house or not or you get a, a lot somewhere because you know your house where it is some fifth floor some flat number something you know the same way your post germinal center b cells only will form the uh, this uh, malts no these are the post germinal center right b cells so they have homing so they express one is called as integrin so they go only to that area even though they are anywhere they just return to their home because of this expression of this surface integrins understood that's why b cells which which become malignant in the lymph node will go to only that lymph node only not only that they in general go to the lymph node if the cell b cell which has malig become malignant in the mucosa or malt will be in the malt only it will not go anywhere because they have the phenomena called as homing see how beautiful it is yes or not because they express your surface integrins that is called homing okay this was the normal morphology like small non cleaved uh, small uh, cleaved centrocytes uh, centroblast i told no c you have to remember immunoblast means you have to remember i that means centrally placed single prominent nucleoli is immunoblast so you should remember i okay this is follicular dendritic cell which has that eosinophilic cytoplasm okay now this all i have i explained morphologically how your centroblast looks so where they are present in your dark zone of germinal center they express low level of surface immunoglobulin what they express low level of your surface immunoglobulin and there will be no bcl2 in germinal center normally there should be no bcl2 because they are undergoing somatic hypermutation what the cells are undergoing somatic hypermutation what is somatic hypermutation you are cutting your genes and joining to get the specific immunoglobulin don't you think in this cutting and joining there is a chances of dna damage there will be excessive chances of dna damage and mutations so if in turns there is dna damage and mutation you want to the, you want the cell to die right you don't want the cell to live, uh, live. so that's why we don't have anti apoptosis because you want the cell to die there because in whenever there is smh is happening there is a high chances of undergoing for dna mutations so that's why we want the cell to die as a counter regulatory mechanism understood but if by mistake they starts expressing this then you will have follicular lymphoma that is it is present on chromosome 18 that is translocation of 14 bar 18 okay that is abnormal so normally your centroblast will express cd10 bcl6 lmo2 and hgal positive okay 
and there will be immunoglobulin heavy chain that is only somatic hypermutation right so it is a heavy uh, chain immunoglobulin gene rearrangement and bcl6 is a marker of your germinal center so what all the markers of your germinal center it is your bcl6 cd10 is a common b cell marker so bcl6 is your germinal center marker so we use two markers that is cd10 and bcl6 is your germinal center marker so any lymphoma which is arising from germinal center you want to prove you will do bcl6 and cd10 understood now centrocytes will reside in your light zone and they express high levels of surface immunoglobulins here it was low levels of surface immunoglobulins and uh, there will be somatic hypermutation and heavy chain class switching so they differentiate into your memory b cells and plasma cells now as they are becoming towards the memory cell so they are changing their lineage so they starts down regulating the bcl6 expression right because they are going away from your germinal center right see where they are present they are present away from your germinal center right here is those cells so this was your dark area of germinal so they are going away so that's why they stop or reduce the production of bcl6 and they start production of your ifr4 what is that irf4 they start increasing the production of your irf4 so that means your post germinal center marker should be what where it went ha uh -huh. so your post germinal center marker is what bcl6 and cd10 negative whereas your germinal center marker will be your bcl6 and cd10 positive and i told you why it has to be bcl2 negative because there is a somatic hypermutation happening that means you are cutting your genes and making uh, so that you get uh, the specific immunoglobulin to your antigen right so there is a high chances of undergoing for dna mutations so if there is a mutation you want this cell to die so that's why you will switch off all the anti apoptotic mechanisms so that's why they never express your bcl2 now see this post germinal center cell is what it has successfully undergone this vdh or somatic hypermutation right so your post germinal center cell has successfully undergone the somatic hypermutation that means it has a ability to produce a specific immunoglobulin for your antigen correct the antigen only got stimulated this fellow right so it has a ability to produce the specific immunoglobulin for this antigen so this type of cell you want to keep as your asset or you want to kill it you want to keep it you want it to live long or you want it to die tell me hello anybody is there we want to keep it man ah that's why you produce anti apoptotic things you don't want it to die so that's why the bcl2 is expressed in your post germinal center that's why they are long lived okay so in general this should be our concept any lymphoma arising from the germinal center will be bcl2 negative if it is positive then think of your follicular lymphomas and look for the translocation 14 bar 18 or burkitt's lymphoma which is 8 bar 14 right and if you are uh, want to prove your germ, uh, your lymphoma is post germinal center in origin it should be bcl6 and cd10 negative and it should be bcl2 positive and it's completely uh, become a plasmacytic differentiation then it will be cd38 and 138 positive okay now coming to marginal zone so this is your marginal zone so these are nothing but your post germinal center memory b cells so they form the marginal zone in your lymph nodes spleen and also your malt already we discussed about maltomas right that homing surface integrins and all so they express all the pan b cell markers and igm and they don't have your cd5 this is cd5 okay they don't have any more cd5 and cd10 because they have become plasmacytic but they'll express bcl2 because they have the ability to produce your immunoglobulin that's why they express bcl2 they are no more your new b cells right they are going to plasmacytic differentiation right so another differentiation so they'll be absent for your cd5 and cd10 so this is the plasma cell so this is also a produced in germinal center comes to uh, post germinal center then released into the periphery these are the long lived cells 
they have mutated this one they contain igt and i they lack surface uh, immunoglobulin and cd20 they express 38 and 138 they are cyclin positive why cyclin positive if there is an antigen comes don't you think this plasma cell has to divide is this much immunoglobulin is enough for you to kill the antigen no no this much immunoglobulins is not enough right you need more plasma cells so that's why it has a cyclin d positive means it has the ability to divide when there is a again the same antigen stimulus is there got it so this i explained so this no need to explain so this is the summary of whatever we read okay this is the overall view what i already explained you the same thing so now coming to the last entity you are bored or it is going or it is going outside should i continue okay you all are awake no nobody is sleeping it's interesting or bad very interesting ah so why you have to classify this lymphomas is we need a common language so that we can dis define and describe and diagnose and treat that's what so that's why we have to classify everything so how you are uh, lymphomas are classified first see uh, first they are classified as where did that uh, slide go first your lymphomas are classified as hodgkins and non hodgkins so if you are seeing rs cell eosinophils and polymorphic population think of hodgkins lymphoma then again it uh, based on your uh, that marker it will be like cd15 and 13 it will be classical and nlphl so if you are uh, not seeing rs cells and the population are monotonous then think of non hodgkins lymphoma okay this is how your approach for a lymphoma should be a basic approach which even a first year pg should know now coming to classification so we have different classifications now we follow is wh i told why we need classification so they are classified as pre and mature mature is again based on the involvement if they are involving your lymph node or they are involving your extra nodal that is spleen or your maltomas okay and then is your plasma cells so how this lymphomas are classified pre mature mature again nodal extra nodal and plasma so pre early you will have based on the lineage b cell and t cell which we already finished that is bll bar nos bll with recurrent and t and nk lymphoblastic leukemia this we finished and in nodal we'll divide them as the same way how you read the journey the same way you divide na no need to by heart how first is your nerve cell no first your nerve cell will come so what happens to nerve cell it can become cll or it can become pro lymphocytic leukemia then comes your uh, uh, follicle what happens to the follicle if something is going wrong in your germinal center it will become follicular lymphoma or burkitt's lymphoma and one more you remember like dlbcl of germinal center type and next is your mantle zone if something goes wrong then it becomes your mantle zone lymphoma that is nothing but your nerve b cell only no it is acquiring the trans uh, location of cyclin d that is 11 bar 14 so it becomes mantle zone lymphoma and next is your marginal zone lymphoma see how easy it is to remember nodal lymphomas next is your others this is also nodal lymphomas uh, associated with other things like uh, there is a hiv infection so what type of lymphoma you can see is plasma blastic or primary effusion associated lymphoma or there is ebv associated lymphoma hhv8 dlbcl and all these all are high grade lymphomas so you remember like that these are high grade lymphomas dlbcl alk anaplastic large uh, cell lymphomas and high grade lymphomas these are infection associated hiv ebv hhv8 one extra fellow is your hairy cell that's it so your classification also so easy right it is very simple right classification of lymphomas like these are nlh non hodgkins lymphomas pre mature again nodal extra nodal plasma cells pre is lymphoblastic leukemia by nos recurrent abnormality and tnnk based on the lineage Nod nodal is again your nerve follicular mantle marginal then hairy cell then remember hiv associated ebv hvv8 then large high grade as your dlbcl all high grade lymphomas now coming to extra nodal obviously what is there extra nodal one is your maltoma one is your splenic marginal zone lymphoma that's it maltoma can occur on git respiratory tract etc that's it last one is plasma cell neoplasm this already we had a class so i don't want to touch this so this is the general approach so anybody wants to repeat revise classification of lymphomas 
easy no super easy okay now coming to approach to lymphomas i told you in general you have to classify as hodgkins non hodgkins see if you are given a cytoslide you just have to mention whether it is a hodgkins or non hodgkins no need to sub classify okay in histopath you can try so now the non hodgkins are divided based on the size of the cell that is size of your lymphocyte small or intermediate or large so in large you will get dlbcl and anaplastic large b cell lymphoma in small will be your nerve cells what are the nerve cells that is cll cll is a small cell right even your mantle cell is also arising from your nerve cells so these all comes under small whereas your follicular uh, burkitt uh, other things will come in the intermediate to large so what is intermediate and large you will compare with the size of normal lymphocyte small means same as the size of your lymphocyte intermediate means somewhere around 2 to 3 large means more than 3 times your lymphocyte next based on the lineage we do this we follow if you are dealing with cytology or you can uh, dealing with histopath where you don't have ihc to prove that time we describe like this like, like you a setup where you don't have a ihc and flow then you just have to tell a lymphoma probably non hodgkin lymphoma small cell or uh, you can give large cell or high grade like that you will give if you don't have ihc and if you have a history that the patient is hiv ebv then you can go for the specific uh, associated lymphomas okay that is how i classify nhls and how i approach then next approach to b cell lymphoma there was a very good article in archives of pathology that uh, diksha ma'am has made one flow chart i just want to discuss that was very good okay so the this was taken from diksha ma'am so if you want you please uh, subscribe her facebook i think already you have so it is based on some article in archives of pathology that also you can uh, see if you want so what uh, how uh, the article says like we should consider first cd5 and look for cd10 whether cd10 is positive or not if uh, cd5 is positive and cd10 is negative then go for cd23 then see whether cd23 is positive or negative if it is positive think of cll if it is negative think of uh, mantle cell lymphoma and go for this cyclin cyclin will be positive in our mantle cell whereas negative in our uh, dlbcl and all then again we do sox 11 and 9 so you can follow this flow chart then one more is the cd5 negative and cd10 positive then obviously you tell me cd10 is a marker of what germinal center right simple concept that's what we read no cd10 and bcl6 is present in the germinal center so if you are if you have germinal center markers positive and it appears to be bcl positive then it obviously it's your follicular lymphoma and if it is bcl negative then think of burkitt's lymphoma only two things can arise from germinal center no simple burkitt's will be associated with ebv and cmic and ki67 will be 100% simple over this slide you understood right next next both are negative cd5 is also negative cd10 is also negative then we should look for plasmacytic differentiations or annexin which is more specific for your hairy cell leukemias okay all those things we should look this was a little easy approach i think you can go through and next one more approach ma'am was written for dlbcls like uh, uh, there are term we use no dlbcl ka full form kya hai diffused large b cell lymphoma so diffused means they are arranged in sheets okay large means i told you there will be uh, see more than two times the rvc so that is the large and b cell means they are uh, they are lineage wise they are b cell that means they are cd20 positive lymphoma means obviously monoclonal proliferation so how we understand we, uh, there are two types of classification of dlbcls okay one is based on the cell type whether the cell is immunoblastic centroblastic or anaplastic one is morphological classification one is based on the origin whether they are arising from the germinal center or post germinal center or whether they are associated with hi hhv8 or ebv okay like that they have classified dlbcl so this immunoblast you know already i i roll no remember i centroblast you remember c see they are uh, attached to the membrane nuclear membrane see like this they are attached 
whereas they are prominent and single i and this is c so this centroblast means obviously where do you see centroblast you see in the germinal center so it becomes dlbcl of germinal center type anaplastic means you see anaplastic cells which may resemble like your rs cells so you will get confused or you might get confused with poorly differentiated carcinoma also so to uh, come to this conclusion we will do hans no need to remember all this just remember the name hans now you tell me what are the germinal center markers it is cd 10 and bcl6 right these are the germinal center markers so obviously if it is positive it will be a germinal center type right if it is negative that means what it is either post germinal center post germinal center means activated type means mum positive means it is activated that is plasma cetic or immunoblast variant anta artha if it is negative mum negative then it will be again germinal center type that's it so i tried simplifying lymphoma basics i think now you will understand and love this concept any doubts please do whatsapp actually today we went out of time uh, but i hope it was worth and okay so hope you liked the class please drop the reviews in the group so that i can do much more better have a good day bye thank you thank you ma'am bye thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am